Hello, welcome to People in Perspective. I'm Evan Jones, and my guest for this edition is artist Susan Sammons. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So first, to start off things, you're an artist. So how was art school? Art school was long. It was? Yeah. How many um, years was it? Um, it took me three years to finish my master's of fine art, but I got a BFA first, which is a five-year undergraduate degree, and then I went on and um, took some time off, and then I went to grad school. Wow, that must have been a really, really long time. And so did you gain a lot of experience there? And, like and in graduate school? Yes. Yeah. Mostly, I think, because I'm originally, well, I was born here in Chicago, but I grew up in Minnesota, and then moving to a great big city like New York City was um, a whole new culture. You know, it was very, very different. I'm from rural Minnesota, and all of a sudden I'm in this great big city of over 10 million people. And during the late 80s and early 90s when I lived there, you know, art was just booming, and it was crazy. It was different. And what neighborhood did you exactly live in in New York City? Well, I lived in... Um, Pratt is in Brooklyn, so I lived. I actually lived on campus. They had um, college apartments, and um, but we would go into Manhattan all the time. So, what did you find out your inspiration to be when you were in New York? Well, it, my motivation actually to go to grad school is because I I loved Rembrandt and the classical painters, and but once I got there, um, you know everything was uh, the whole modern movement was so big and popular and I just kind of got swept up in all of that so my my direction really changed and who I started studying with became more of the modern masters instead of the classical masters and so it wasn't until after I finished and saw my thesis show I was like okay this is not what I went to grad school for. Yeah what masters did you find of modern age? Oh back then I was really um, influenced probably like Julian Schnabel, he was a big guy, and another guy named Sally, and then I like the installation artists who, this one guy named um, Flavin, he uses a lot of neon lights, and uh, so it's very different from say Rembrandt. And with Rembrandt, I was going to ask, what did you find about his uh, paintings to be inspirational and motivational to you? What I like about in Rembrandt is um, his subtle use of color, and it all stems from this technique called chiaroscuro, which is an Italian word, so I'm butchering it. And um, it, if you look at a Rembrandt work, most of it is in shadow or in, in the dark. So, and then what's in the light, what you actually see is about 30 or 40 percent. And as an artist, you do all your work developing those shadows and, and your darks because they're kind of like the anchor. But as a viewer, what you're seeing is what's in the light. So what types of art have you come to start painting? Um, well, after grad school, I stopped using the oils and I just went to charcoal and pastels to try to uh, redefine my definition of what is art for me because it kind of got all messed up with the whole um, hanging out in Soho and the modern movement. And um, then and we were also living abroad, my husband and I. Then when I came back to the States, everything was different because all of a sudden now you have computers. When I went yeah. to grad school, there were no computers. We had uh, electric typewriters, right? So now all of yeah. a sudden I came back to the States and there's the internet, there's websites, and um, it was easier to, to retrain myself in, in a classical manner. So you have a website for, to display your art? You yeah, the website is... Um, became handy and I think a necessary tool for a lot of visual artists uh, to, to get your name out there for, yeah. for exposure and um, you know when, when I first developed a website I needed a webmaster to maintain it now they have all these nice little templates for ignorant computer ignorant people like myself I can even maintain it myself now and it's a way that brings collectors galleries and so would you say your website has helped so you get into more galleries to display your art? Um, yeah, it's one of the factors. It's not the only factor. I think as an, as an artist, you have to spread yourself in many different directions. Um, I have the website. I have an Etsy site. I have um, art representatives. I have interior designers. I have galleries. So there's many different venues. But the website kind of holds it all together. And then another way you display your art too, uh, you 
um, make art for private collectors. Yeah. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, and, and that plays into the website as well. Um, sometimes people are total strangers. I've never met them, didn't see them at any of my shows, and they'll just contact me through the website, say, um, you know, I saw this painting. Can you make it a different size for me? You know, I want something like that. And um, I had last year one lady contact me from D.C. She's like, I saw that you do landscapes. I really like your style. Can you make me a painting of um, the scene from Norway that where her husband's family is from? So she sent me a bunch of photographs, and you know, totally out of the blue. But she had spent the time surfing the internet and found me that way. It must be surprising to just have someone out of the blue. It is. It's like, wow, it's like a present or something coming to you. Yeah. yeah, so now we're going to take a look at some of your paintings. So soon um, we'll look at your first painting, Autumn Glow, which is a landscape. So Autumn Glow, can you tell me more about it? Well, I, usually um, when I do landscapes, I work much smaller. And this one is, I don't, I think it's 30 by 36 or some, somewhere along this. So it's pretty large, or 28 by 34, I can't remember. And, um, but I, every once in a while, I'll haul out a big canvas. And um, this is actually in Brookfield, that little park before you go over the, um, the bridge, not too far from school here. And so that required me to take going back like three times. The third time when I went back to finish it, they had actually cut down all the tall... Oh, no. <laughs> you know, whatever it is, grass and prairie grass and the wildflowers and everything. But it ended up working out in my favor because it allowed me to play up the cast shadows more from the trees. So. And so for your next painting, Lindy, can you tell me more about it in general? Well, figurative, that's why I went to art schools because I love painting portraits and the human figure. Um, but what I'm trying to do with my figure work is still play around with the classicalism but also bring in more personal expression. So that it's not just about paint, making a painting. It's got some um, mystery involved in it. And so what do you think makes your lin painting Lindy mysterious in general? Usually when I use a fig do the whole figure, I try not to make it an identifiable particular person. Like I don't try to paint features so that somebody would go, oh, that's that particular model. I um, try to like, uh, you know, put her face partly in shadow, or in this case, I just turned her, had her turn around. Actually, what happened is she was posing for a couple of us all day long, and this was when she was taking a long break, about a 20-minute break, and it was a real natural pose, you know, that she just kind mm -hmm. of flopped down in the chair, and I like that about it. You know? So, uh, what would you say Lindy is looking at? Who knows? That's up to you as a viewer, you know? Hopefully that's what you're, as a viewer, you, you'll be like, well, what is she looking, you know? Well, that's about all the time we have today. Thanks for coming on the show. I'm Evan Jones. See you next time on People in Perspective.